Uno, dos, probando, un, dos Uno, dos, uno, dos Un, dos, un, dos
I'm headed to the mountains. I'll be back in a week or two. Don't you try to reach me, 'cause I won't pick up for you. I've got some things I need to do.
us in the live stream we are excited to be here with you in the presence of God Father dear love got it
Great. I want to begin with a reading from 1 Corinthians 13. It goes like this. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but they have no love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have no love, I'm nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have no love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind, sees on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice of wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Luca is now going to lead, lead us on a time of prayer. Awesome. Um, congratulations, Lily and Jarrell. Um, this is a prayer which is written by my grandfather. Uh, unfortunately, our grandparents haven't been able to make it due to COVID, but um, our grandfather's a very steadfast man. So, yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for thinking of us in love and sending thine only begotten son into this world that we might live through him. Thank you for the manner of his coming in mean and lowly circumstances. Thank you for the beautiful life that he lived, his spotless purity. He was whiter than he that serveth, and he stooped to wash his disciples' feet. We thank thee that Lily and Jariel have accepted him into their hearts and lives, and that their desire is to follow him and to serve him to the best of their ability. Grant them a rich sense of thy presence today and throughout their married lives. If it please thee, grant them children and grant them the ability and wisdom to bring them up in the fear of the Lord. We are the translation to this. Now we're going to have a time of worship. When we were planning the wedding, we were trying to figure out who to ask to lead worship in such a special day. And we came to the conclusion that since I do it all the time, then I, I should... <laughs> I should lead worship on my own wedding, right? I'm going to step like this because the wind is getting um, in the microphone. So I know whoever wants to stand is welcome to stand. Whoever wants to lift their hands and into this place. So We've seen his faithfulness over and over again. We've seen his goodness and his mercy. We saw him making a way for this wedding to happen. He is good. He is here. He is with us over and over again. He's showing it. So let's sing. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of changing with thee. Thy change is not thou compassions, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Sing it out, great is. Great is thy faithfulness, we believe. Great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand have provided great is thy faithfulness Lord, unto me. Let's sing it in Spanish. Oh, tu fidelidad. Oh, tu fidelidad. 
cada mañana la veo en mí y nada me falta pues todo provees en todo tiempo grande Señor lo creemos grande is more than enough in every season in every circumstance Lord you're so good I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me all my days until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. So good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it out, I love I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other And I've known you as a father Yes, I have I've known you as a friend And I have been In the goodness of God Oh my life, oh my life, cause your goodness is running, your goodness is running after, it's I wanna surrender now, I give you everything, your goodness is running after, it's running after, come on sing it out, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, never stops. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. One more time. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Yes, it is. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Never stops, it's relentless. His love, His mercy, His goodness. Seen it, Lord. Oh, and we will see your goodness in the land of the living. And we will see your goodness in this place. Yes, we will. Oh, and we will see your goodness in every season. We believe, we believe. I sing it one last time, all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. 
every breath that I am able, I will, will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing what God has put in his heart. Thank you, guys. going to give it to us, my second daughter and bridesmaid. Yeah, so, great, you can hear me. Genesis 50, and I'll be reading verses 15 to 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they, said, when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for I am as they are today. So... Do not fear. I will provide you and your, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Thank you. You can take that. Plan. Okay. Well, thank you for that. First off, to everybody online, we miss you. We wish you were with us physically. We're glad that you're with us online. And I hope that you have a blessed time with us, even though it's quite late in the UK. And I hope you'll stay. I've got about 90 minutes prepared. I heard that was the sort of sermon time that we like in Puerto Rico. So I've got about 90 minutes. We'll try and condense it to maybe 60, just to keep things short. So our reading was from the book of Genesis and the story of Joseph. Now, why didn't Ramon has told me that? Good genes, many children. That's our hope. But there are a few stories in the Bible, in truth, that are bigger on rags to riches or the Hollywood story of a changed life and extreme blessing from God than the story of Joseph. So I've got three lessons from the story of Joseph that I'd like to... If you want a life where God is going to give you his blessing, then you live a life of forgiveness. The first lesson of Joseph, he lived a life of forgiveness not judgment or vengeance. He lived a life of forgiveness. The second, I'm going to speak about these in a minute. So, you know, just a warning. This is the preamble. Yeah? The second, he lived a life of faithfulness. He was faithful to him, but God lived a fruitful life. You know, he ended his days as a dot-com millionaire, a billionaire. He was ruling Egypt. All of the ancient world had come and bought. Pharaoh had been elevated. You've maybe not been to see the, the great, great history of Egypt. But it was the king and capabilities. Use them for the glory of God and for the good of people, not just for yourselves. Okay. So point number one, how was Joseph? How did he live a life of forgiveness? How do we know that? Well, Joseph grew up in a household where 10 of his brothers hated him. They hated him. He was blessed. He was loved. They didn't like it. They were jealous of him, and they wanted to kill him. And at the age of 17, they planned to kill him. They didn't. They threw him in a pit. Some traders came along selling slaves to Egypt, and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver to Egypt. The average life of a slave with it. His wife took a fancy to him. We'll come on to that. Took a fancy to him, accused him because he could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. He got elevated to the position of prime minister of Egypt. But in that hardship, he was sold by his brothers. He was a victim's victim. A true hashtag, Joseph's had a hard life. Yeah? His brothers show up 22 years later. His brothers show up 22 years later. They don't recognize him because he's dressed like me. You know, he's looking good. 
Okay, he's dressed like Jerry L. It's all about Jerry L today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and he's looking good. His brothers don't recognize him because they think he's dead. He thinks he's a dead slave. But now he's the ruler of Egypt. And they show up. There's a famine where they've come from. They've come to buy grain and to buy food. So Joseph has his chance to exact vengeance. He has his chance to exact righteous judgment. He has his chance just to say, wake up, guys. And what does he do? Through a process of revelation, he basically reveals himself over those months, and he falls on his brother's necks and forgives them. They were a pretty motley lot, to be fair, not the greatest brothers. But love, we read about it, love covers evil. Love conquers evil. And you're called to forgive. If you can forgive as Joseph forgave, not just forgiving and saying, get out of my sight, it's okay, I won't kill you, here's some grain. But he brought them from destitution in Canaan. There were going to be five years more of famine. He brought them to the land of Egypt and allowed, with Pharaoh, allowed him to set them up in the land of Goshen, the most profitable land that there was, the most futile, fruit, uh, fruitful land that there was. He took his brothers who caused him great pain. And Matthew 6 tells us, for those who've been forgiven, the evidence that we've been forgiven by God is that we forgive others. So my appeal to you, Jariel, when Lily makes mistakes, when she gets on your nerves, and trust me, wives can occasionally be annoying. <laughs> Obviously, Ramon has never told me that. But that's exceptional. Most wives can be annoying at times. You forgive her as Christ has forgiven you. Lily, even Jariel, who looks like an angel, doesn't he? When he's up here singing, do you think there's something angelic about him? Yeah, well, at times he's not going to be like that. You know, he's trying super hard right now. In 20 years' time, he's going to try maybe a little bit less. You better not. But he might. And if he does, you forgive him. Forgive each other often. Forgive each other early. Yeah, love covers a multitude of sins. Love each other. And when it comes to the world outside, they're going to disappoint you. We will disappoint you. Your friends, your enemies will definitely attack you and disappoint you. You know what you do? You love them. For loving them, you pour coals of hot, you know, coals on their heads. Our call is to let the judgment for God, in that verse that Florence read to us, he said, God is your judge. I'm not your judge. God is your judge. And he forgave them and loved them. So that's our business when it comes to other people. Don't trust the pain that you're experiencing. Trust the Father in heaven who loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for us. Okay? Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, live a life of faithfulness. Joseph was faithful. He was faithful to Potiphar. He got sold to Egypt. Potiphar was his first boss. Potiphar ran the prison guard and he ran the armies. He rose up in Potiphar's household in a moment. And then Potiphar's wife, he was, it said, he was about 18 years old. He's a very good looking kid. Potiphar's wife took a fancy to him. It started with infatuation. It became obsession. In the end, she physically assaults him, grabs his coat. He doesn't stay. He runs. He runs. Do you get that? I don't know why I'm focusing on Jariel at this point. I think it's because I'm the father of the bride, maybe. But, you know, if that happens, the intern comes, Jariel. The sad family breakup, the beautiful woman comes and wants to counsel, wants you to counsel her, wants to share the stories. Oh, my husband doesn't understand me. You run my friend. Okay. Lily, the songstress, the producer, the singer, the whoever it is, the barista for both of you. I don't know. He, Joy's a barista. Yeah? Whatever, whoever it is. In that moment, what did Joseph do? He was faithful to Potiphar. He said, can I sin against you, against Potiphar, my boss, who's treated me so well? No. And I can't sin against God. Yeah? But he was faithful to his boss, but he was faithful in purity. Be faithful to each other. In purity, be faithful to each other, please, for God's blessing, for our health, to keep us well, yeah, and to keep your marriage strong. He was. 
He was faithful to his boss. He was faithful to God. You know, you don't hear the story, Joseph gets sold into slavery. He gets into the prison. He spends 10 years in the prison or 10 to 12 years in the prison. He's not moaning at God. He's not like, God, where are you? What's going on? I get a heat rash, and I'm like, what's this about? I didn't sign up for heat rashes. God, remove the heat rash, please, now. Good times. He was faithful, too, in the good times. When he had abundance, what did he do? He saved the world. He didn't just say, hey, Pharaoh, I've done a good thing for you. Now you set me up in a beautiful villa in Puerto Rico, just down the coast, and I won't hear from anybody again. He spent the rest of his life distributing food, gathering food, serving the people of Egypt, serving his own people, and serving the world. So he was faithful to his boss. He was faithful to his father. And he was faithful to his family. He brought his family out of Canaan and put them in the land of Goshen and looked after them. You be faithful to the world, to your boss. Be faithful to your earthly family. But be faithful, most of all, to God and to his family. You are serving the church, Jariel, in what you do. Do it faithfully for his glory and for the edification of the body. As you are, carry on. That is, a, that is what it being faithful is. And be faithful to one another as long as you both shall live. Okay. The last thing. You know, when he went to work in Potiphar's house as a slave, he quickly rose up and Potiphar trusted him with everything that he had. When he went to prison, he started running the prison. When he went to, Far to Pharaoh's kingdom, Pharaoh made him the prime minister. Now he saved for himself. He used them for the good and for the benefit of other people. He was called, and you are called, to bless God's people, to bless your family, and to bless the world. We don't know how that's going to work, but we do know that is what our calling is. When Joseph was in prison, what was the fruit? When there wasn't a great exaltation of his work, when there was nothing to show for what he was up to, was he impatient with God? No, he waited on God. Now, we've got a lot of potential singer, songwriter, producers, you name it, gathered here. You know, we don't know when your moment's going to come. But if you're trusting in the Lord, he will exalt you in his time for his purpose. Just put your trust in him. You leave that future to God and live in the present, yeah, with the power of his Holy Spirit. Okay, so what I want to say lastly is this. Joseph was humble enough to wait to be exalted. 13 years. The age of 30, that's when Joseph made his mark. I can get Joseph was a talented from a kid. He was a precocious kid. He had dreams from God. He could interpret stuff. He was a brilliant kid. At the age of 30, his moment came. It didn't come when he was 17 or 18 or 25. He came at 30, and he spent 13 years in slavery in prison first. Wait. Be humble until God exalts you. Joseph was honest about who does the exalting. Jariel, you've got a great gift. It's God's gift to you. He gave the credit to God. You know, when Pharaoh pulled him up and said, Joseph, he'd been 13 years in prison. They washed his hair. They shaved his, his, his beard off. They put him in front of Pharaoh. They cleaned him up nice. And they said, Joseph, I understand you interpret dreams. And Joseph said, not in me. I don't do it. Not in me. God interprets dreams. He'd waited 13 years, the most life. We pray that you would have a great life. We pray that you'd have an abundant life. Yeah, that's what we pray for. But in your abundance, Joseph served the people, not just himself. If God gives you abundance, remember where it's come from, why you have it to share with others. Okay. Well, the last thing I'm going to do is answer a question that I have not been asked. So the question I've not yet been asked, but it is a question that I asked myself, <laughs> was, you know, why are you giving this beautiful daughter of yours, yeah? Who, you know, somebody, of a guy like you finding a woman like that to marry and then producing a daughter like this? I mean, what's the chance of that? And, of course, he was a lot bigger than me, so I, I, I didn't say anything, but I answered as best I could. Well, I said, maybe 100 to 1. He said, no, more like a million to 1. I said, well, 
look, that's God's blessing. That's God's blessing. But I'm going to answer a question I wasn't asked by the groomsmen and warmth. I won't disappoint you. God has changed my life, my heart, and my mind. I am a living testimony, and God has used Lily and all of you to show me his goodness, his mercy, his love, and favor. Forever thankful, forever family, with love, Jariel. And then the last bit for you all, let's celebrate. And that is what we will do next. God bless you. For the whole of their earthly yourselves and your, li your life to each other before God and thus gather here today, please join your hands as a lovely wedded wife to and to hold from this day forward witness and in health husband to live together accord according to God's word in the holy state of matrimony, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to para que se mantengan centrados en su matrometemos. <laughs> now, Jerry and Lily prepare their own vows. Yes. Oh, you hold it. When I asked Gareth if I could marry you, I made him three promises. Number one, I promised him that I would be faithful to you. Number two, I promised him that I would love you like I love myself. And number three, I promised him to lead our family to love the Lord above all things. So today, in front of our witnesses, I want to turn these promises to you. Lily, I promise you that I will be faithful to you, that my eyes might put yourself before myself and to sacrifice every day my own needs for your own. All that we are to keep him at the center of our lives and to seek direction from the Holy Spirit as we, as we build our future together. These are my vows to you today. And in front of everyone, I say, I love you. I'm yours. Thank you for loving me with everything you are. I promise to always do the same. I love you. So the bridal party is here with me, so <laughs> that circle is a symbol of trust not to be broken. For now, you enter a covenant between husband, wife, promises that uh, they have made to each other this day. May their love forever encircles each other. Allow these symbols to remind them also of your extravagant love that surrounds protects and enriches their hearts through me. It meant to you. As my as a symbol of I will honor I will honor and cherish you and cherish you with all that I am with all that I am and all that I have and all that I have. And each time I look at this ring and each time I look at this ring I'll be reminded of the privilege that it is I'll be reminded of the privilege that it is to be with you. And place it on Jariel's finger and repeat after me. Jariel. Jariel. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. We bless you, O Lord, our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace, and fellowship. We pray that you pour, let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. In your and the Holy Spirit, one God, come one in the sight of God.
buscarte un catete hey, Inyectame tu amor como insulina Vestido tengo el rostro de amor 